Hi, hi, hi. Um, okay, today's the last class of our natal interpretation sessions, and um, we're going to be using the horoscope of Sigmund Freud. And um, next week, we'll be um, continuing just as we go, we'll be continuing with the transits and start to work with the transits on your own chart. So we'll get to that. So, okay. Um, yeah, so Sigmund Freud, how oh, we need the steps. Sorry, I had to find the... So what this whole series of classes I've been interpreting is just getting used to using the 30 steps. And the 30 steps provide a good standard for a foundation, a good standard for a full interpret, a, a thorough interpretation of the foundations of your horoscope, of the natal chart, of your character. And there are many other things you can add on to it, but they're not as important as these main 30 things. If you've covered these main 30 steps, you've done a fairly thorough job and you're ready to move on to other layers. Anytime, I mean, they say if interesting of astrology, you can use just one step and people can relate to it and they can go with it. But every time you leave a category, a step or something else, you're missing something and you lose some of the depth. So it's nice to have the in-depth insight and to be comfortable with it and know that you're as competent in natal interpretation as anybody else is going to be. Okay, it's a lot easier to follow the straight steps and get the discipline of it rather than just winging it and jumping at the first thing you talk and you're jumping around talking at what stands out to you and then missing all kinds of basic factors. Okay, so um, again, we start with the pattern type. Now, determining the pattern type for Freud is interesting because you first look at it, it's going to it almost look like a bowl except that there's one planet outside of the opposition. There's more than, there's the Neptune opposition. It comes just outside of it. So it's technically, it can't be the bull with the Mars because of Mars to Neptune, but it can become, it does become, it switches the other way. It becomes the seesaw or the, the bucket, excuse me. It becomes the bucket with Mars as the handle. So um, all the planets are on one side, nine on one side, with the, like a bowl, but it has the focus on the Mars, which I thought was fairly significant for him with his sexual therapies and his approach to sex and understanding how people um, interact with each other and the subsequent repercussions of that. Okay, so I just put this on here. And oh, oh. Okay, so when we get to the bucket type, the nine planets on one side of the chart with one planet on the other side, the bowl gets a handle. If one planet gets past the opposition, even by a few degrees, it becomes the handle of the bucket. This reveals, so in this case, when we looked at Sigma Freud, it looked like you see the bowl, but there's one planet past it. And because that one planet is past it, it doesn't become the handle. It, you would think it would. If the planets were all over the place, it might be. But in this case, it divides the other way and Mars is distinctly on the one side against the other nine and Mars becomes the handle. Okay, this reveals a person who delves deep, deeply into life and enthusiastically pours forth the results of experience. One's personal efforts will go out in an uncompromising or rigid manner. You'll have a basic interest in a purpose or a cause, but have little concern over the final results. You will use whatever is at your disposal as you see fit. You're inclined to make allegiances that will be of the most benefit to you. The hand of planet shows the main focus throughout in life. And this is Mars, his passion, his aggression, his sexuality. That focus is strongly there. Okay. To get to the moon phase, moon phase fairly easy. The moon's really close to the sun. It's just past the sun. You have the sun, the moon's in the next sign. So we know that the moon is 28 degrees, the actual angle. So we know it's the waning, it's the waxing new moon phase. So if the new moon phase is just waxing, it's the beginning of the phase. It's a, so the the 
Okay. So the new moon takes the beginning of the lunar cycle and lasts for three and a half days. The light is emerging gently from the depths of the dark of the darkest moment up to the first slim crescent of light and a little further until the crescent is smiling brightly. This is a highly intuitive time filled with deep impressions and new beginnings. This is a time of seed moments and powerful insights. There's a predominant undercurrent of anxious anticipation. A new moon cycle is born. Born under this phase, you, you need to feel that your life is just beginning to open up. The challenge is subjective. Are you prepared to advance your own cause? You should really readily adjust your lifestyle to support any new sense of direction that you feel is emerging within you. You will be constantly having to make new starts in life. You will be sensitive to new beginnings and uncertain about your present surroundings. You are inclined to leave old attachments and memories behind. You want to move forward towards your goals and will be frustrated by any setbacks. So this point of leaving all the attachments and memories behind, want to move forward towards goals and will be frustrated by sex, any setbacks. This idea of frustrations and effects of frustrations and sexual impressions and frustrations and leaving behind, moving forward, these are all integral aspects to um, Freudian analysis. Um, when you begin to begin a project, it's important to advance with care and gentleness. Make sure that you nurture and protect uh, the germinating seed, the new you. It is usually easier for you to do things than talk about them. Remember that you do not have to achieve everything right away, but it is important for you to feel that you are advancing towards your goals. You are the kind of person who plants ideas in the minds of others. You will reach out and impress others subtly. I like this, the idea of plants ideas in the minds of others. The Freudian stuff we just throw all the ideas that come up, all the, all the ideas come up, so suddenly a key idea comes up that's a, relating to the moment. You will reach out and impress others subtly. You'll always be able to sense the new path that should be taken. As long as you're moving along this path, you will feel relatively secure. Worries and problems will surface when you crystallize or stop growing. Do not look back or hold on to the past. Nurture the light within, protect your development, and do not throw your good ideas out to fools who will not appreciate them. Neither should you follow the dreams of others. Trust your own inner sense of direction. Whenever you can make the effort to be creative, you should. Do not try and explain the process, just do it. Consistent effort will accumulate. Reach out, rely on your instincts. Grow, break out of old patterns, move on, move on. New beginnings are all, always seem small against, this, against the vastness of life around you. Nonetheless, every journey starts with one small step. Try to find friends who will support and acknowledge your effort. Always be cautious about what you say. Words can come back to haunt you. You will always be trying to start something, making make certain that you take time to water the flowers and the plants in your gardens of hopes and dreams. The end does not always justify the means, so make your daily life creative. Take time to smell the flowers along the path. You'll be able to draw encouragement and inspiration by listening to birds singing. Okay, so this is an interesting point where, um, okay, a lot of my charts have kind of disappeared here, but well, um, between the pattern type and the moon phase, um, we have the strong folk, the idealism and the depth focused on doing things. Then you have the new moon phase, having new beginnings and seeds of things and, and being having to start things and having to start things the first step, one thing at a time, where to start, where to go. So there is a kind of a sort of link between the new moon phase and the pattern type, except the new moon phase is it's more cautious at beginnings. And the pattern type is a little bit more blatant and pushing. So it's a, a mix between force and caution here. Okay, now, move this over here. And then pattern type, please, we want to take our next step is 
just look at the sun, moon, ascendant. Pull this down. Okay. And here we have the Leo sun. I got the wrong one. What's over here? No, that's, that's right. Something's wrong here. Taurus. No, this is incorrect. Why? Okay, here we go. We're just going to, I'll have to do this as we're, as we're here. It's, um, okay, so we have, let me switch the way to here. Okay. okay. I'll take okay. yeah, the pattern type was the bucket. Bucket. Focus handle was Mars. Okay. And then moon phase angle. Oh, I think I okay, let's see if we get it. Twenty twenty eight twenty. Okay. Three minutes. Okay, and it's the waxing. Waxing. One phase is going to be waxing the moon. Waxing the moon. Okay, so there we are. Sun sign is Taurus. Moon sign is Gemini. Gemini. And the ascendant sign is Scorpio. Scorpio. Okay, so this is the point where we are right now. Looking at the Taurus Sun, Gemini Moon, Scorpio rising. So still we get the sense of this a certain determination or stubbornness. The Taurus and the Scorpio has a certain fixed approach to things. Um and and you have the Gemini curiosity, the intellectualizing and the interest and, and the Gemini. So you have water, earth, and air. There's not fire, there's not Seems like there's not enthusiasm or spun. Like he has the Mars focus, which is somewhat fire energetic, but in these three, it's a little bit more curious and determined. Curious from Germany, but determined and consistent, maintaining his approach, getting trying different ideas, maintaining a fixed approach to try and consolidate. That's his nature. It's um Four points daylight increasing, one to one point nighttime increasing. So you can see need to do his own express things his own way is there. You have um no, that's about it. You could you could say, say that between the sun and the ascendant, you have the Venus rulership, the Mars rulership, and the Mercury. So thinking about Mars and Venus with sexuality. You can see that sort of theme there. But on his nature, he has the Taurus charm, but the Gemini curiosity and independent, both very independent, thinking his own way and seeing things, but he has the Scorpio ascendant, which is very judgmental and consistent and determined and fixed and kind of private. So the ability to see the secrets and see the inner things, this is the basic factors here. It's um, 